and microgreens. I said that? Yeah. No worries. Oh. Yeah. Hey guys, you remember Alyssa? She was out here with Tyler last year. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Honey Tree Farms where Moss Videography is creating a documentary for the Honey Hog Restaurant in Falston, North Carolina. <laughs> She's so... Hi. All right, Alyssa, tell everybody what you're doing. Uh, Cameron's here with me. We're shooting the sizzle reel to pitch a TV show. So I started working with the Honey Hog last January, and since then, it's just been, it has been amazing. I didn't even know that I was passionate about local food until I stepped into this world. And I started going to farms and seeing how everything just comes together. So we're uh, shooting. <laughs> All right, I started shooting for the Honey Hog last year. Um, and basically, what we've done is over the last year, just we've all gotten to know each other super well. And now we are shooting a sizzle reel. Cameron brought his big rig, and we're um, gonna do a a pitch to make this into a whole show to teach other people how to live the good life. It's Cameron, professional I watched, cameraman. I watched you at the camera. If you want to put the amendment down, I can rake it in. <laughs> it's Tori's birthday. Dirty 30. Woo! George, what's it like to be 30? <sighs> Reckon it's all downhill from here. Yeah. All right, we've been getting ready to plant peppers here. Uh, compost amendments, weed mat down on this bed. Also doing the same thing with this bed. This is for the next succession of cucumbers. We are building the nursery plot today. So if you're starting a garden, this, this is what we do to set them up. You measure your area for how big you want it to be. This is um, 24 by 100. That's enough for six beds, the way that we grow. And you get your corners, like that's a corner. We had the other corner over there, and then that one. So then now we had a perfect rectangle or square. And then we're coming in, marking our beds. I'm gonna shovel the soil from the walkway into the bed and rake it, and that's it. Build both those beds shoveling like that took 15 minutes. The bees are swarming. Well, for whatever reason, they decided to leave one of those hives. I can't, it's probably the bigger one. That's a really productive hive. Are they still coming up? That is a big swarm. That's cool. I think we can get them from there though. Be just, I think we can get them. That's a really big swarm. Yeah, that's... They're like all the way up there too. Yeah, they like can't even swarm down there. They'll cluster up somewhere though, and that's yeah. the lower branch. We can just put a rope around it and pull it down lower. You can see them all there, clustered up. There's a few different clusters. pretty typical for bees to cluster up like that on a tree. Um, I called Doug and Sylvia so they're bringing some stuff and we're gonna try and get it. Alright hopefully we can pull that thing down and get those bees off the branch and into something. Trying to see if they're bringing it down a little more. Oh, 
I still take it a shower. In I think room. the queen is in there because they're, they're filing there. right in. I think she's in there too. Yeah, yeah they're really scooting right in there. Her scent's probably still up there. Doug, do you oh. think, why do you think there were four separate swarms? Well, actually we had three bunches of bees up there. And there's a possibility, and this happens once in a while, that three virgin queens hatch out at the same time and they leave the hive because there's pressure for them to leave or be killed. And other bees will follow. So you'll end up with three virgin queens in three separate swarms. And if you can get them in your brood boxes, they will go out and get mated and you'll have three new hives. Which looks like we might have this here. We'll know tomorrow or the next day when we look in and look for queens. If we find a virgin queen, we'll know. If we find a mated queen, then we'll have to rethink our situation. <laughs> but uh, that's what we're up to right now. There was three different clusters and we thought for a second it might have been three virgin queens which means they haven't mated but they all hatched out at the same time and basically left <laughs> so that was our initial thought and um, so we took down three clusters instead of one um, put them in three different boxes and they all acted like they had their own queen but when Doug and Sylvia took the three boxes back to their place they all got into one box so it was one big swarm it just clustered in three different places. The swarm that we got is still at Doug and Sylvia's place. Um, it's doing good. They're working hard, doing their thing. But yeah, bees are so interesting. You can never stop learning about them. If you guys want more bee stuff in these vlogs, let me know. Look at all the cucumbers I just harvested. All right, doing the bee stuff is cool, but we still gotta get back to work. Um, so this nursery plot, I'm gonna broad fork it, amend it, and then put compost down, and then PDR it, and it'll be good to go. Got enough amendments here in the wheelbarrow for every bed. Hey, he's working hard. All right, compost is down. Now it's time to incorporate it. This same method is how we've built all the beds on the farm and now there's 78 of them so it's a lot of work initially but they're permanent beds and they get better over time no with following no-till adding compost uh, getting the soil tested amending for what it needs working cover crops in uh yeah you build them once and that's it so it's not that bad really all right you guys remember the uh um, the ladybug larva that was on the pine where the spittle bug was. One thing I noticed with the spittle bugs, especially on these pines right here, actually, here we go. Nice. Um, if you can see that. Well, today I was checking out these, these are, um, romaine lettuces here. And, um, the ladybug larva is actually on these. So that's some good pest control for this bed. And these things are coming on real nice.
That's why you don't spray Pyganic and harsh organic pesticides. You don't look a day over 30. <laughs> We're planting beets in this bed. And we don't normally transplant beets or any roots, but if we do transplant roots, it'll be beets. They respond the best. Direct seeding roots is better, but like I would never transplant a carrot. Hey, guess what? I'm just over here dropping beets. Oh my God. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> the reason that we're transplanting these is because they're about three weeks old, but we started them earlier, so they'd be three weeks ahead of direct seeding into this bed, which was arugula that we had tarped. So now that it's ready, we're putting in three week old plants and getting that jump start. All right, well, Tori's um, finishing watering that bed. I'm gonna get some foliar fertilizer on these guys. It's really just seaweed and uh, microbes, so it's like a compost tea, an extra boost to get them going. What in carnation are you doing, George? I'm gonna take it out a little bit because the bidding is bulky. Casey's done a previous segment on the daisy chains and how we store our row covers. So I have them all stored up nice and neat here now. So you can see they store pretty nicely and pretty compact. We just came through and pruned the tomatoes. Ladybug larva on this tomato with uh, aphids. Aphids are the only insects that give birth to live young. So the bigger red thing is the aphid and then the little dots are little aphids. Probably born like recently. So we were back getting eggs and uh, looking for eggs in the woods and Addie and Tumbles were just cruising around back there. They found a baby possum. Okay, tree of the week. So this is gonna be the tree of the week. And then next week, if you guys wanna guess, um, I'll do go over this one. Give you a better look here. Oh, this is cool. This one, a lot of people probably know this one. They, you might have a different name for it, but I know it as Tree of Heaven. So you have, you got this new growth that's green, alternate leaves. These leaves are pinnate, just like the um, hickory leaves were. And then this big flower stalk. And the overall look of the tree is this uh, gray bark here. There. You got the gray bark, the big leaves. It kind of looks like um, like something from Jurassic Park almost. Uh, red here is another sign. And. Uh, one of the reasons I picked this tree this week is because this tree is dioecious, which means it has male trees and female trees. And a lot of trees are monoecious, which means they have male and female flowers on them. So you have those identifying characteristics and the smell of this tree. I'm pretty sure it's the males that smell worse than the females. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, but. It smells like dirty socks and like dead stuff, like stuff that's been dead for a while. Um, and once you smell it, you'll never forget it. But this tree is really good for urban settings. It's like the most pollution tolerant tree. It can pretty much grow anywhere. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people don't like it. I don't really mind it. And when they get this big, it's kind of cool. But they're really weak wooded. They're fast growing. So they do have their downsides. 
but as you did see the honeybee was on it right when the blooms were opening so it's good for something yeah once you smell it you don't forget it here's the squash plot that we had planted uh, back a few weeks ago uh, it's come along pretty good so we had that week of cold weather, a couple nights down to 32. We just left this cover with row cover all day, all night, and they grew and started flowering. Here the wind pollinated some of them to start setting fruit. So we leave it covered with the insect netting until it flowers, and then you gotta uncover it so the bees can get in there and pollinate it. So these aren't flowering yet, but these are. So those are uncovered, and these aren't. Hopefully with the late cold, the squash bugs won't be real bad. They were really bad last year. For the squash bugs though, there is a product called Surround. It's it's a, it, or kaolin clay, either one, same thing. Uh, it's just a really, really fine clay powder, and you spray it on the foliage of the squash, and it creates a uh, like an environment that the squash bugs don't want to walk on. But if it rains, it washes off. So probably going to try it out this year and see how it works. Um, hopefully that little bit will help with the extra cold that we had. Sorry, I didn't record much on harvest day. Um, we had a chef come help. And I don't know if he wants to be a YouTuber or not. So I tend not to record stuff when other people are here, just in case. And, uh, and uh, it's a lot of work to do it. We harvest a lot and we wash all of it and then we do pre-orders and get ready for the market and I'm getting ready to deliver. And Tori and I pretty much manage all the land by ourselves a few hours of help a week so it tends to be a lot sometimes. We've got salad mix here, um, there's carrots, kale, Swiss chard, the kohlrabi. All the uh, microgreens, that's a salad for the honey hog. So I'm about to take that, that's, um, that's like 25 pounds. Take it in those coolers with some ice packs to keep them nice and cold. This is what we take there every week and it's actually kind of slow right now because of the virus, so they're down a bit and probably be like that for the next one or two weeks and then they think they can open it at capacity, we'll see. But. It ends up being like seven to eight hundred a month just in salad, just to them, and uh, that's great. It's a good relationship. We're really thankful for that, and that makes a big difference for us when it's like making the decision with Tori to quit or not. And uh, yeah, we still have tomatoes, onions, cucumbers, um, cabbage, and we do collards over the winter with them as well. So. That's a place that actually buys local food. But the difference is you have to produce it every single week consistently and have quality stuff. 